Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Jeremy Smith. One positive thing that's come out of the global pandemic is the fact that we've all discovered that we can do a lot of things via live stream. And even I have started to do some experimenting with this. I've started to do some different online classes via live stream and all sorts of things. And uh, it's been really good. But one thing that's been kind of terrible about it is the fact that whenever I live stream, I have all these cables just sort of strung around the room and it's not been so happy there. And also I've wanted to do some things outside and it's just not practical to do so with cables. So when Hollyland reached out to me uh, about their Cosmos C1 wireless video transmission system, I thought this could be the perfect thing for me to test to be able to see if I can uh, possibly get rid of some of this cable clutter. Now, just like any product that gets sent to me, if it's terrible, I don't even talk to you guys about it. Uh, so obviously, if we're at this point, this product has got to be pretty awesome. Um, I've already gone out and done some testing with it, and it, it works just as advertised. Um, basically, you're able to transmit video at up to 1080 60p, up to 1,000 feet to line of sight. And uh, of course, I wanted to push the limits of this. Um, but before we get into all the testing, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this unit, and I'll show you guys what comes in this kit. Uh, the cool thing is, it does come in this nice case. Um, I'm not sure why I always go in about the cases that things come in, but I'm always, I'm always, uh, I'm always uh, feeling a bit more positive if a, a company supplies something in a very nice carrying case. If you guys would like to purchase this unit, there will be an Amazon link in the description below. Um, definitely check that out. Uh, this is an awesome product. And of course, you guys checking those products out allows me to bring you guys even more videos about even more cool things on the channel. So that is very, very greatly appreciated. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the closer look at this device, and then we'll get on with some further testing. Taking a closer look at the Hollyland Cosmos C1 wireless video transmission system, or rather the very nice case that it comes in, I have to give these guys their props. Uh, we're living in a day and age where most nice uh, gear does not come with a good case, but this is definitely an exception. It's all laid out very nicely here. Uh, we've basically got a wireless transmitter as well as a receiver which we'll take a look at in a moment, but let's go ahead and get out the accessories first. Right here, I actually have not unboxed this, so you guys are seeing this for the first time with me. Uh, looks like we have, looks like we have our AC power adapter, and looks like it does have interchangeable plugs for different countries. Although I'm in the U.S., so I only get the U.S. type connector. Okay, we'll set that aside. And let's see what we have under the, this part right here. Oh, yes. So I've done some reading about all this. So basically, this system comes with two different types of antennas. These right here are the so-called uh, mushroom antennas. I think the technical name for these is circular polarizing antenna. Um, basically, it's an omnidirectional antenna. So if you are in a situation where you have the transmitter and the receiver, um, you know, far from each other, but they're on different levels, like perhaps you have a situation where you have... Um, you know, someone up uh, in the stands at a game or something like that, and you know they're monitoring the signal from a camera that's down on the field, and obviously camera and monitor would be at different levels. This omnidirectional antenna is going to work out better in that type of situation. So we've got a couple of those. And then we have our standard type of antennas here. These are more directional antennas. So this system is good for uh, transmitting video at up to a thousand feet uh, line of sight. So these are the more directional antennas here. 
So these are the flat ones. Obviously, we're going to test out the, uh, <laughs> we're going to test and see what type of range we get out of the system. But we have four of these. Those, uh, uh, those uh, omnidirectional antennas are only used on one of the units. So we'll see how that works out. But if you're not <clears throat> at different levels and you're doing line of sight, then you use, you use antennas like this on both units. Okay, let's see what else we have here. All right, let's see. This is going to be, oh yes, I believe this is some type of bracket. Oh yes, perfect. That's exactly what this is. Little hot shoe, hot shoe style bracket here. <clears throat> kind of a magic arm type deal. All these accessories seem to be very high quality, by the way. So we've got that, pretty cool. And we also have a USB-C to USB-A adapter. These units can be powered uh, via USB-C, but if you had an A cord you were plugging in, this allows you to have that adapter there. And lastly, we have, let's see, I believe this is another type of Oh yes, okay, so this is another type of uh, bracket. If you wanted to mount the uh, transmitter sort of flat on top of a camera hot shoe, this goes into the back of the unit and then this goes onto the hot shoe like that. So pretty cool there. All right, so that's what we've got. Of course though, the main components here are our actual transmitter and receiver. Starting with the transmitter, I'll go ahead and make another point that I really love about the case that Hollyland included. If we take the transmitter out, you guys notice that I actually have a L-series battery fitted here already. There is actually enough space in this case below to actually have the battery mounted. So some companies, when they design a case, they don't really do a great job of considering the accessories that you actually have to use with the product to make it work. But Hollyland did a good job of making sure we have space to put the battery. So once again, kudos to them on this case design. If we take a look at the side of the unit here, you'll notice that we have our HDMI input as well as our SDI input. We also have an SDI out. That way, if we want to be able to loop to another uh, monitor or another device, we can. And then we have our AC power adapter. So that's where we will include, that's where we use that included AC power adapter. Uh, we only have one included AC power adapter in this kit as you saw. But I think that this is really ideal for most folks because you could take the transmitter and power it by the battery and then you could leave your receiver plugged in all the time uh, next to the monitor. So I think that will work out very, very well. If we take a look over at this side of the device, you guys will notice that we have our USB-C uh, input there. So you can power this via USB-C. We have your on and off. We have a little rotary style toggle uh, that also presses in to select things. This will let us change our channels and whatnot on the uh, OLED screen here. And this will display things like signal strength. We'll take a look at this a bit later. I won't, I'm going to actually get this out into the field and do some range testing with it. And then back here, of course, we can remove this battery just like that. We seem to have a small cooling fan here. And the whole unit is very, very robust. You guys can kind of hear that it's made of sort of an anodized aluminum type of uh, material here. So very, very rugged. If you look at the receiver, it's basically the same thing. Uh, I like how they color coded transmitter and receiver. That is a nice touch because as you guys know, when you've got similar things in your bag and you're, you know, in the heat of battle, so to speak, it's hard to identify what's what. So that's a nice touch so you can identify which is which at a glance. Taking a closer look at the connections on our receiver, it basically looks just like our transmitter. Except here, obviously we have outputs as opposed to inputs. So we have a couple of SDI outs as well as an HDMI out. And then down here we have our DC power in, so you can power the unit this way. Um, you can also power it via the L-type battery. And you can also power it via the USB-C connector, just like the transmitter. 
Now, the one thing that is different about this uh, USB-C connector is that this can be connected to a computer. Uh, and that is because this transmitter set actually supports something called UVC, which is uh, USB video capture. So basically, what that means is if you take this and plug it into a computer, it will detect it as a webcam type device. So you could actually do like uh, a Zoom meeting or FaceTime um, or like Facebook Live or any of those services. If you plug this system in, it will basically show up as a webcam. And I'll show you guys how that works a little bit later. Now, this leads me to one of the few critiques I have about this unit. It's really not about the unit, it's about the manual. <laughs> um, if you go online and you go to buy this and you look at the Amazon store, for example, you will notice that they explicitly state that you can do this whole uh, USB webcam, uh, you have this UVC capability and so on. But if you look at the user manual, it makes no mention of this. So if you're a nerd like me and you're looking at the manual and uh, you're looking at all the setup, would have been nice to see that in the manual, but it does work very well. We'll speak about that in a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and power this unit on, and I have my receiver just out of the frame. We'll power it on too. You can see that we are starting up here. Now, another, thing, another cool thing about this unit is that it operates in the 5.1 to 5.8 gigahertz range. Um, basically, that means that we should theoretically see a little bit less interference because we're not operating in say 2.4 gigahertz, which is where you have things like uh, more computer networks, uh, you've got things like Bluetooth. So basically there should be less crowded radio, uh, radio frequency in this range. The other th cool thing about this is that it does support an automatic switching. So if it encounters uh, like any type of interference, it'll automatically switch and uh, it works very, very well. Now, if we use this right here, we can go in and it is possible to change the channel manually. So you can set it to a given channel, but I've been running it on automatic and it's actually been working very, very well. Another thing that you can do here is if you press and hold this button down, it will jump into a little menu. So you can manually scan. Um, there's a few settings in here as well. Not a whole lot. You know, we've got some pairing language. Uh, I will mention that by default out of the box, <clears throat> the units were already paired. So there's no reason to do that. And then we have some info in here as well. So not a whole lot in this menu, but that's basically what we have here. And uh, yeah, then we can exit. So it was very, very intuitive. Uh, you can see it's all paired now. Uh, whenever it gets down to low battery, um, it'll start to, start to flash uh, red there. So pretty intuitive unit, very easy to see what's going on. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's get into the field and we'll talk about some different testing. Right off over there in the distance is Bedford Camera and Video. We're doing this test and um, inside the store is a TV that is currently being filmed by my iPhone and uh, we should be getting a signal from that uh, are from this camera right now so I'm going to go down and point this down at my feet right now so that way we'll see if we see my feet in the other video but uh, yes we've got this so way over there off into the distance right over there inside that building that is where the receiver is connected to the TV so now, uh, seeing as how it's like 95 degrees out here right now, um, we're going to walk back that way. And we're going to walk back down there. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see how we did as far as maintaining a video signal. All right, I do apologize if the video is jittery. We'll walk back all the way. It's very, very, very hot today. Okay, so we're getting closer. There should still be seeing some sort of signal. I hope. No 
All right, we're going back. Going back. And let's see here. I'm doing all this so you guys can see how far away I was. Okay, let's see where we are. <clears throat> okay, and there it is. There's the TV. Yeah, there's our TV. And there is our video feed. <clears throat> so we will see just how far we were able to go and we'll see if this connection cut out any but I think this is the first good test we'll see what this looks like okay so we're doing <clears throat> more Hollyland C1 uh, Cosmo testing um, what we're going to be doing is um, I have my um, Atomos Ninja 5 here uh, plugged into the receiver and we're down range right now um, this is where the receiver is going to be positioned roughly and further off down trail is where I'm getting ready to go. Um, I have the transmitter on top of my 6500 here. And uh, basically, I'm going to leave the, leave the uh, receiver here plugged into the Ninja 5. And we're going to see just how far um, we can go and maintain the signal. Um, this thing has a range rated of line of sight up to 1,000 feet or about 330 yards. I have a range finder. And I'm going to measure out the distance once again, kind of like how I did in my previous test. And uh, we're going to get as close to 330 yards as we can. Um, honestly, that's further than I thought it was. So we're going to get as close as we can. And uh, then I'm going to basically just uh, keep on recording. I'm going to kind of pre-measure pre out the distances. I'm going to see if I can exceed that distance a little bit. If I do exceed the distance, I'll let you guys know. But we'll see if a signal is actually recorded uh, to the Ninja 5. So that way we can see exactly how much we're actually getting done here. So anyways, let's let's go ahead and get to it. We are set up. We're transmitting uh, downrange right now. Um, I'm not sure how far away we are right now. Let's just sit here. We have our handy dandy range finder. Okay. Hopefully no one steals my receiver. Okay, so right now Right now we're at uh, 180 yards. I'm gonna go ahead and come in front of the, this camera here. So I'm gonna do a little one sign here to let me know that this is basically the spot where I first set the camera down. We're gonna proceed uh, a little bit further down range and we're gonna see how we can do. There's going to be a, some there's going to be some video editing magic in this one. My camera work is terrible, but I think we're doing well. Okay, so I've got my receiver uh, set in line with the tree down there, and I'm sort of using the uh, rangefinder on the tree. Yeah, and it's giving me 180 yards. So let's go ahead and move this camera a little bit further away, and we're going to see what we can do now. It just occurred to me that if we're actually still getting video transmission. Um, you guys are actually getting a chance to hear me panting as I'm out of breath from running. I uh, know, but other than that, that means that you guys are actually getting a video recording of me right now uh, going back to the Animos. I don't know if that's the case or not. So let's see here. Let me cut back to my other camera footage. Okay, we're cutting back to my other camera and um, yeah so <clears throat> you can see we're still transmitting or at least we hope all right so we're still going down range and let's see how far away we are now I can barely even see my receiver down there. We're getting 318 
yards right now. So the maximum distance of this unit, line of sight, is uh, supposed to be um, about 380 yards or a thousand feet. Uh, but yeah, we're getting 318 right now. I've kind of run out of area to go. So if we're still getting a transmission signal, I'm gonna call this good. I think I'm gonna push it further one more time and then I'm going to go and gather my things and go home. Um, right now it shows like three uh, bars on the single sig uh, signal strength indicator. So I think we're actually doing really well. Uh, okay, let's... Okay, we're going to cut back to my other camera now. Okay, so here we are back on my other camera. Um, yeah, I'm going to go home now after this. I think this proves just how well this unit works. Let's go ahead and get a, a lock on our distance. It is getting really, really, really hard for me to hit that tree from here, by the way. Okay, so it looks like we're somewhere around uh, 330 yards right now. So, anyways, that's going to have to be enough because um, I've actually run out of space. I, ca I can't back up any longer. So, we're going to have to repeat this test with a bigger venue, but um, I think that this, this proves the point. This thing works well enough. So, we're going to stop right here and go back to the studio where mosquitoes are not attacking me. The last thing that I tested on this unit was the built-in webcam feature. Um, I plugged it in and tried it with FaceTime on my Mac and it worked very, very well actually. If you guys have difficulties with this, be sure to try a different USB-C cable. Um, I've noticed that not every cable works well with it. But yeah, we will do more testing with that feature later. Um, this unit works exactly as advertised. We got 950 feet in the range test and it did very well even with obstructions. Write me in the comments below if you guys want to see me do any additional testing. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.